this morning I'm speaking on the subject divine visitation or God's visitation or the Lord's visitation perhaps the Lord bless you so much the phrase of the Lord bless you the Lord bless you for making it all those from 25 good to see you again Hallelujah. What is visitation? A daily ensnare, that is one of our key pillars. Prayer, evangelism, visitation, and follow up. Visitation is when one comes to see you and to see how you are doing. Visitation is when any person, any loved one, anyone that you mean so much to decides to come to you and to see how you are doing. He or she comes to see how you are faring and he or she comes with a blessing. Hallelujah. There are some aunties and uncles, anytime we are told that they are coming to visit, it's a joy and it's a pleasant season because when they came, all we need is not really they are coming and they staying long. But when they came, the thing they did when they are leaving was so much important to us, for me in particular. Because when they are leaving, they will call and say, where is he? And they'll put his hand in his pocket and give you money. Hallelujah. And that was a good thing. So anytime we say that, uncle, so so and so is coming, oh, you can rejoice because you know that it will happen. Hallelujah to Jesus. And there was one particular uncle, anytime he came, I, I made sure I was so close <laughs> because I knew that uh, the closer you are, uh, it will happen. But there are others also, when they came, you know that it's always trouble. He said, you can be finding fault. Things we have not even done, you'll be complaining. I said, I saw this uncle, no, 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 no. So when we are told that, oh, uncle so-so and so is coming, Okay, he should come by, he shouldn't keep long. Hallelujah. But, for, but you know what I'm talking about. There are those aunties that when we are told that auntie so so and so is, is going to come, you know that she's coming to collect. But there are those also when they came, be behind them, is another person carrying a basket of load of food stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And drops all this package and within some few days it says I'm going back. And so serving those ones was a joy because you knew that definitely some goodies would happen. So a visitation is the act of visiting, the act of a loved one coming to you and coming to you to encourage you, coming to you to strengthen you, coming to lift you up, coming to do you good, coming to minister goodness to you, coming to bring you peace, coming to bring you joy. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's even wonderful when they come and your parents would have to move away because they have another assignment and so these are the ones going to be with you and, and they're so awesome because they are so careful to make sure they don't do anything evil to you because when daddy or mommy comes the report to happen that when auntie so so and so came it was not good at all hallelujah so such is it that in this course of our journey, we must also be in expectation 
that the Lord of Lords and King of Kings would definitely come to us. But in his coming, he would come to always bless. He would come to always favor us. He would come to always do us good. He would come to fulfill his promises to us. He would come to bring us to a better place in him and to unveil his destiny agenda concerning our lives. Anytime the Lord decides to visit his people, it's for two reasons. It's to bless, it's to reveal himself to us, is to draw us closer to him, is to minister to us and to bring us to the depths of his purposes for our lives. In some other cases also, in his visitation, it is for reprimanding, it is for punishment. To punish us for things we did not do right, punish us for disobedience. Hallelujah. But the thing about his visitation is not as our aunties or our uncles do. He comes expecting you and I to be prepared for his visitation. Hallelujah. Exodus 19. Three months after leaving Egypt, the Israelites entered the wilderness of Sinai. They followed the, the, the route or the route from Rephidim, arrived at the wilderness of Sinai, and set up camp. Israel came there facing the mountain. As Moses went up to meet God, God called down to him from the mountain, speak to the house of Jacob, tell the people of Israel, you have seen what I, have, I, I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought, and, and brought you to myself. Hallelujah. In the journey from Egypt to Cana, he showed up among them. He visited them. He was with them. He carried them upon the wings of an eagle. He was with them by day through the pillar of cloud and by night through the pillar of fire. He was with them. He came to them. Hallelujah. Let's read on, please. If you will listen obediently to what I say and keep my covenant out of all peoples, you would be my special treasure. The whole earth is mine to choose from. Hallelujah. Because of who we are and because of what we are, the Lord would specifically do some things amongst us. The Lord will reveal himself to us in a way that he would not do it with other people, not because we are anything, but because of what we mean to him as people of Adonai International Ministries. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Like Israel was to God, so are we to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he would come to us. So he gave an instruction that we would sanctify our hearts, sanctify our spirits, sanctify our souls, sanctify our bodies, separate ourselves unto him because we are his and his alone and he will not share us with anybody. He says, but you are special, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. This is what I want to tell the people of Israel. This is what God wants us to know, that you are special to him. And because you and I are special to him, we cannot live and do things like any other people because of who we are to him. So he will come to us. Amen. 
And because we are who we are to him, and he would live amongst us and glorify himself with us and through us, we cannot live anyhow, we cannot do things anyhow, we cannot do things our way, but we need to follow divine protocol. We need to follow the due order. Amen? I can recall over the years, as I worked with him and he worked with me, and the kinds of things he has asked me to emphasize, and the way he brought those things to me. And I remember so well that particular evening, it was a Wednesday evening, whilst I was preparing for evening service at Subing, he came so strong with the word, the due order, the due order. And interestingly, everything he instructed to be done was part of the assignment he had given me to fulfill. The due order. And let's read on, please. And let's move on. Media. Moses came back and called the elders of Israel together and said before them all these words which God had commanded him. The people were on on and on on anonymous in their response. Everything God says we will do. Moses took the people's answer back to God. He says, Would you serve me? Would you be my people? Would you separate yourselves to me? Would you consecrate your hearts to me? Would you live everything and follow me truly, totally, wholly, and completely? He said, Yes, Lord. Because you see, a covenant always has to do with two people or more. God has his part of the covenant to play. You and I have our part to play. Are you with me? God wants to visit us. God wants to come to us. But there are some requirements we must put in place for the visit. If you want to do anything, build a company, build a factory, whatever, a building, there are building inspectors that come to inspect. If you want to raise a crash, there are those that the Ministry of Education was sent to inspect your premises and certify it before they would allow you to operate. If you want to operate a, 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 a food joint or a fast food, well, whatever you want to do, there are people designated by government to make sure that you are certified. If you want to produce any drug or food to sell to the populace, the, um, what, what do you call them? The standards authority. And the foods and drugs board or they must certify. If it's an education uh, institution, you must be sure that you have all it takes. Amen? And there is a unit of the education system that would come and they must give you what it takes to qualify you to offer the courses that you must, you are eligible to offer. How do we call that? Accreditation. You must be given accreditation. You must be found credit worthy. Your credibility must be affirmed and confirmed. So, beloved, how many of us here want to see the Lord visit us as a church and as a people and as a family and as individuals? Then you should know that the divine accreditation board, the divine environmental and protection authority, the divine building inspectors and the divine food specialities and the divine food and drugs board and the divine standards board. Because we have been called with an assignment. We are committed to impacting our generation with the standards of Christ. Hallelujah. We have been called. This is our assignment. This is what we've been called. This is why we've been called. Standards. Not man's standard. If men have standards, they make sure you go through those standards. If you miss one, you are disqualified. 
you are given a permit to enable you to do what you have to do. Ours is the standard of Christ, influencing everybody in our generation to fulfill their full potential and destiny in Christ. So that we don't just do anything anyhow, we do things with Christ in perspective. Are you with me? If you read on Exodus 19, the Lord said he was coming to reveal himself on Mount Sinai to the people of Israel. He was coming to have an impunimpu encounter with them so they must prepare themselves. When we receive visitors, what do we do? We give them water, we give them food, we give them homage, we make them feel at home. Is that not so? All right. So read on Exodus 19 and you would see the requirements. It said, tell the people to do what? Moses, sanctify them. Make them have their bath or bathe them, let them bathe and let them wash their garments. Hallelujah. And let them abstain from sexual activity. Amen. Are you with me? So if we want to experience the visitation of the Lord, then young men, young women who are in relationships, you must be conscious of this, that you are not married yet. You must sanctify yourselves and keep yourselves for the Lord, for you are God's temple. Now you cannot defile God's temple, because the Bible says in 3.18 or 3.16 of First Corinthians, 1 Six eighteen and one three sixty says that you are the temple of God. Your body is God's temple. Anybody that destroys God's temple, God will destroy. Don't let the mess on social media mess you up. Because you are a peculiar people. You are a holy nation. You are a generation set apart for the Lord. And for what God wants to do with us, we cannot mess up ourselves. We must keep our hearts for the Lord. It says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. If anybody else is occupying your heart, if your, heart, if your wife, your husband is occupying your heart, if your children are occupying your heart, it's a mess. Christ must occupy your heart first. Christ must come first. Hallelujah. If Christ is truly in your heart first, you will love your wife or husband better. If Christ truly is in your heart first, you will love your children better. But it can't be the other way. You can't love your children more than Christ, then you've missed it. He wants to come to us. He wants to visit us and bless us. Anytime God came to man, he came to bless. Anytime God came to man, he came to lift man from his level to God's level. The Bible tells us in the Garden of Eden that, and God came to Adam in the cool of the day. And it was a daily thing. God's visitation to us and God's visitation in our individual lives and our collective lives as a church should now become a habitation. Yeah. Are you with me, somebody? You get what I'm talking about? God wants to come to us. But we must be ready for him to come to us. God wants to come to us and he wants to come to us. He wants to come to us and bless us, not to kill us or curse us. But if we deny him by living anyhow, that means we have denied and rejected his visit. And who can stand that moment of lust? Nothing in this earth is worth comparing to that which God would come to do with us when he visits Hallelujah. So take time and read through Exodus 19. Let's read verse 25. Exodus. So Moses went down to the people. He said to them, 
God spoke all these words. And I am your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of a life of slavery. Beloved, we don't own our own lives. Hello? This is a who said So you have no other gods, only me, God. I said Exodus 19:25. Exodus 19:25, not Exodus 20. Twenty-six, please. That's not. That's not twenty-six. Genesis eighteen. Genesis 18 from verse 1. Let's come back. Let's come before Genesis 18. Um, let's come back to Exodus 19 from verse 14. Exodus 19 from verse 14. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. Hallelujah. And Moses did what? He came down to his people and did what? Sanctified them. They washed their clothes. 15. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. So no sexual intercourse with your wives. He didn't say, Come not at your wozos. He didn't say, Come not to your boyfriends. He didn't say, Come not to your girlfriends. Because that one day is a no go area. If anybody tells you that, I will say, Oh, such answer. Tell the person that I say that he's a good. It's only goats who do. But oh, yeah, punchy. Hallelujah. If the husbands and wives are to stay away, then what about those who are not married? Amen. See, because the thing is that. We have worked in error. You know what, what is DNA? D oxybonucleic acid. That is what really tells all of the completeness of your life. Your genes and everything. So if you go and lie with any man or woman, you transfer your DNA to that person. So let's say, as a lady or as a man, you have Peter, James, John, Tonash, CC, Boat, Bose, yeah, yeah. So how many DNAs do you have? The, you, 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 your, your system will be confused. So when the Lord says we should abstain from sexual sin, he knows why he's saying it. Because he says when you lie with anybody, you become one with the person. Amen. Now, I keep wondering, why is that in most DNA tests, they don't use blood, but they use saliva? So it means that when even you kiss a lady, you are transferring DNAs. So you have transferred your DNA to that lady you kissed yesterday night while she was looking into my face. But 
but he says, I want to visit you. Go back for your saliva. Go back for your saliva. Hallelujah. So sanctify yourselves. They needed physical wash because I've been making a journey. I went to 50. God was so conscious about sweat because you see, there's so much your blood type antigen. Your personality is in your sweat. The personality is in your sweat. The chemicals of your body is in your sweat. So when even God gave instruction about the priesthood garment, he made sure that everything that was worn under before was that which is worn so that the sweat will not come from within and soak the outward. No contamination. Galatians 2, 20. Galatians 2, 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Many years were I see a miti Yesu netiasi wamimu. Hallelujah. This should be at the back of our mind when we go about whatever we are doing. God wants to visit us. He wants to come to us. He wants to come to you. He wants to come to your house. In uh, Luke 19, the Bible says Jesus was going into Jericho. And there was a tax master, a tax collector called Zacchaeus. His stature could not allow him because there were tall guys, the crowd was heavy. But Bible said he climbed a sycamore tree because he wanted to see the Lord Jesus. The attitude of your heart, the poster of your heart, your hunger and your quest would also allow your visitation to be complete. Yeah. When Jesus, our Lord, got under the sycamore tree, he lifted up his head because he saw him already before he got in there. And he saw his heart, the hunger and the quest and the cry of his heart. He says, I will climb this sycamore tree so I can have access. When the Lord got there, he said, Zacchaeus, come down from the sycamore tree. But today, you are going to be my host. I'm going to be in your home. And everybody started murmuring. You can murmur, but when one's heart is ready for the Lord, the Lord will overlook and override and come to you. So it's about the state of your heart. Matthew 5, 6 and Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hello? Verse 8, it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I'm wondering how my children would have felt and feel if they've always been told that your daddy is fair, tall, hey, hey, and they have never seen me before. I don't know how it will feel like. And how they would have described, just as now, I cannot describe my daddy to my children. Because he died before they were born. So if I was also gone, before my grandchildren were born, how would they have had a real feel of grandpa? Are you with me? So in our relationship with God, since nobody has seen God, 
But the Lord Jesus said, whomsoever he will, he will reveal the Father to. I want to see my Father. I want to see my God. So these eyes have been destroyed. These eyes have seen things that are not supposed to be seen. These ears have heard things that are not supposed to be heard. And it's been destroyed. It's been destroyed. They must be replaced. About some weeks ago, I want to buy fuel. And the attendants were speaking Hebrew. And I could hear everything they said. They never knew I heard everything they said. I said, Lord, this is how I want to hear your voice. Because you have put in my ears that which is able to interpret what they have said. And I can understand clearly, though they were not talking to me, I'm privy of what they are saying. Because you have put something inside here that can make me hear them. I will hear. I can in the same way, my prayer is that my spiritual ears shall be open. So, so okasa mate. So my spiritual eyes be opened. So when the Lord Jesus Christ walks this aisle, I will see him that this is my Lord. Abraham saw him. He said, Abraham sought to see my days. He saw it and he was glad. John 8, 57. So, beloved, God wants to visit us so we can see him. If you receive a visitor and you cannot see, what would happen? Hello? A visitor has come to your house. And because you are blind, you cannot see the visitor. your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad beloved your hunger your quest your strongest desire would make it possible amen Genesis 18 a body or a visit here, he will visit. But you and I must be ready for him. And the Lord appeared unto him in the place of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. The Lord showed up to our father Abraham. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. Should the Lord Jesus show up here? I'm going to sit and cross your leg. And said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. The thing that would make him come to us if we have a servant heart. Say a prayer was here. You will assume for a coma. Radi begin in watch. Amen. Say a prayer was near in your assume for a coma. Radi begin in watch. Say between your cotu and radi near a jay and bibia, a yena, a tibia, a tea. He said, let me get some food for you. Let me get some water. And they did. And when everything was over, he said, where is your wife, Sarah? In always the visitation of the Lord, he's carrying a package of blessing. 
And this year, we cannot afford to miss that blessing that God has for you and I, individually, collectively, as a church, the 32nd Annual Holiness and Purity Conference. That is why there's nothing more important than our preparation of the readiness of our heart, the readiness of our soul, the readiness of our body. Yes, that we can experience him in his full glamour of beauty because the Bible says he dwells in an unapproachable light. If the Lord should come down to us, he reduces his glory to the barest minimum. Otherwise, when he shows up, we will die. He will kill us. On Mount Sinai, when they saw the fire and the quaking, the shaking of the mountains and the tendering and, and, and the voice of the Lord, they said, Moses, wait here. That was how man denied to hear from God. But God wants to relate with us in Punimpu. He came to our father Abraham. Hallelujah. He's always the God that visits. In Luke chapter 1, verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind, What manner of salutation is this? The angel Gabriel was sent to Mama Mary with a message of the conception of the savior of the world when he comes he has a thing to do with your life and my life and the thing shall be forever his coming must be a permanent coming to us his visitation must be a habitation and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. The Lord grant us favor. Yeah. Yeah. We must be pure. Because if we are not pure in your heart, if there's offense and guilt and unforgiveness and anger and any negative attitude, beloved, he will not come. He will not see. Because when we come together like this, he sees us as one. I may be clean. If you are not clean, you may be clean and holy. If I am not and we are together, that's why all of us must be cautious. Of cleaning ourselves making sure that we are who we must diligently deliberately consciously work it out individually and collectively because we want the visitation of the Lord amen and when he comes everything shall be made perfect when he comes somebody said I don't want much I just want the Lord to come and just come and pinch me keke. That alone is enough. Hallelujah. Me, I don't want a pinch. I want to carry him. Hallelujah. That he will reign with us forever. He sent Gabriel, but it was he who visited our mother Mary. He visited our father Abraham. He visited Zacchaeus. Hallelujah. Throughout scripture, he has visited different people at different times. Paul and Silas in prison, he visited them with his angel. Hallelujah. When our father Jacob was wondering when the father sent him to go see how his brethren were doing and he was lost in the wilderness, not finding his way, he showed up and gave him direction that your brothers are gone to Dothan. 
He would always show up to give direction. He would always show up to give instruction. When the Lord visits, it is for our good. So don't allow anything to deny you from having him as your visitor. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Our hunger, our quest, our passion, the purity of our heart. Empty yourself from anything. That is why from now till the conference and beyond, Monday to Sunday, each of the day you were born, make some time fast and pray. Seeking God that, Lord, I want you to prepare me, Holy Spirit, to qualify and certify me for the visitation of the Lord. Because from the 26th to the 1st of October, beloved, we cannot afford to miss it. This 32nd Holiness and Purity Conference is to bring us to an end of an era and begin a new era with us as men and women of Adonai. Hallelujah. Some things must end. There must be a beginning of a new face. Because life is about faces. And if, if, if the church fathers will tell you, if you follow church history properly, every 30 years, there's a new wave of God. Every 30 years, there's a new move, a new wave of God. So I believe that in our 32nd celebration of the Holiness and Purity Conference, there must be a thorough visitation that will become a habitation perpetually, that we would experience the Lord on a different wavelength. But are the people of God ready? There's a price to pay. Hallelujah. We cannot just live anyhow, do things anyhow, walk in our own way, please ourselves and, and feed ourselves with all the unnecessary things and still think that he will come anyway. Beloved, even if he stood before you and I, if our eyes are not clean and our hearts are not clean and our bodies are not clean, we will not see him. That is why it's so important for you to understand that there is a visitation coming and we must be prepared for that visitation because it will turn around our lives 360. Amen. Amen. Luke 19 from verse 40. This was a sad experience. If it ever happened, it can happen. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. You know, at the triumphant entry of our Lord to Jerusalem, he entered Jerusalem with the nameless, the nobodies. Hallelujah. An ass coat. That was tied somewhere at the door where two rows met at a crossroad. Nobody. Student's companion. He says, as a fool as what? As a donkey. Nameless. No dignity. No identity. That was the one he chose to write on. It says, which no man has sat on. Don't let any man sit on you before the 26th of September. Don't allow anybody to influence and dictate your life and determine what your life must be. Anything about anybody, ah, a shower, so a mawa titi, now when you found with you, if you walk when we send it, say, Radeba. Amen. I want to see Jesus, and I don't want anybody to come between me and the Lord. Anybody that comes, my jibumla, because I want to see my King and my Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Don't allow anybody to mess you up and disrupt you, interrupt you with anything. Not with any insecure, not with any gossip, not with anything that would rather bring the anger of the Lord upon you. Because God wants to. And the, the, the better we allow him to prepare us, the, 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 the earlier. If you don't prepare yourself and he wants to prepare you, you see the onion? 
You peel it one by one until nothing is left. You want God to peel you? Jahumumano. The Bible tells us in is it James 4 7 it says draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Trimbe nyame nanyame trimbe. Hello. Trimbe nyame trimbe nyame. Tada mawunu na mawuna tada nu. Amen. So there's an activity. 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. And when he was come near, or bear chrono, or share chrono, and no suya, saying, If thou had known Sankawunim, near Yashisha Amau Sadea, near my papa beer, a yet a sumje near ma, ye didn't hint out near. He says, if thou had known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. There's always something God has for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Nyame wo nyame bi ma o so wo ma nyame bi wo nyame bi wo ne ye bi wo suban bi wo tibia bi wo susu bi wo kasa bi da si kwai unto jesus when he entered jerusalem the first place he went was where the temple and he cleansed the temple because there were things in the temple that ought not to be should the Lord come, it's better if we cleanse ourselves and put ourselves ready. Otherwise, if he is clearing us, he will clear us with our rules. Amen? Amen. So it's better we get ourselves ready than he come to cleanse us. He wept over the city. The next verse, 44. For the day shall come upon thee, 43, that thine enemy shall cast a trench round about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. And shall lay thee even with the ground, your true good, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knew not the time of your visitation. Because if you know your time of visitation, you will prepare and put some things in place. But because you have ignored it, there's an agenda to pull you down and to destroy you. But don't allow it, because you have insight. He said, Peter, I have prayed for you, for the enemy has sought to sweep you as wheat. But when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. I will say, yes, sister. Yeah. Beloved, I will say, yes, sister. From Papa to Abu Fraya, I will say, yes, sister. The super, you have been green, your name is the near my, your son, you see five dreams, the way we see things, the way we do things, we must change. We must be convicted. Hallelujah. Who did you do, sister? Who did you say, who did you sister? Who cast your mind on say, who cast sister? Who did you do, sister? Who did you say, who did you sister? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. That's all about sorry, the one oh ma a you see in child selfie, sister a subam pony. Selfie no udi kwachire wana. Baba baba sorry open selfie. Next time in Husa, me catch the phone. Me say onye juma biu. Into phone onye juma biu ma udi kwa repera repera say kuto fu fran wese me na me. Because I want to see it in your me binti akro. He says, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Hey! Don't miss your time of visitation. Because if you don't have a home, 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 and because you and I do not know when, we must be ready all the time. Hallelujah. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. This is the hour of visitation. At least God is a God of seasons and times. So the 26th to the, th the, the 1st of October is a season that has been designated over 30 years ago. And he's made it clear that in that season, he will prosper us. He will cleanse us and, and bring us closer to him, and then he will prosper us. And at least you must know and work towards it. Hallelujah. This is blessed is he when the Lord shall come, shall find him so what? Waiting. You must be in expectation. Every September, there are some seasons that God has given Adonai that we cannot miss. The fourth month, the seventh month, the ninth month. The eleventh man, you, you cannot afford to miss this season because there are seasons, and it's a God of seasons and times. Hallelujah! So plan and do things around the seasons of the Lord, because in those days He shows up differently. He shows up; He can show up every day, but thank God that for us He's giving us some specific hot points. And as for this one. I pray you, by the message of the Lord, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Don't miss your time of visitation. Hello? Hobbs, I beg you, don't miss the time of your visitation. Make sure that your heart and your soul and everything is ready for this year's holiness and purity conference. Hallelujah. Amen. Guitar no moonsu. Keyboard no onsu. Amen. Drums no one bomb down from Tom from. And create a highway for the Lord to descend. Who knows when the Lord will come? Mokran and Bunyan Shiran is me. Because it's Amen. And he's no respecter of persons. Whosoever will may come. Be be your pen. On be far qua. Menum abedi. Amen. Because they did not know the day of their visitation. He came anyway, but they could not be bothered. That should not be our portion. The, the Lord should come and we, we are ready. Making demand on the anointing. That what even he has not planned to give us, he will give us. When the angel visited our father Jacob, he said, bless me. He says, what is your name? 
He said, he held himself one shramia minja muda. What? Samoa head. Beleshe. So, if you're born on Monday, sanctify a fast. Tuesday, sanctify a fast. Wednesday, sanctify a fast. Thursday, sanctify a fast. Friday, sanctify a fast. Saturday, sanctify a fast. Sun Sunday, continually seeking God that Lord cleanse me, Lord purge me, Lord remove anything that would hinder me from receiving of your fullness because I want to enter into your fullness. But any possible thing that is hindering me from your fullness, please, Lord, help me, Holy Spirit, take it away because I want to see of your fullness. And let's prepare. Because in this, from the 26th through 1st of October, the Lord will visit us. Just as he said to Moses that tell the people of Israel that they should be ready three days, we should be ready. I'm telling you before it comes to pass. Be ready. Amen. Because I want to see what I have not seen yet since he spoke to me about holiness and purity conference. Hallelujah. Is the message clear? Don't miss your time of visitation. Name or yet the Juma Nimre or Tene Nesa Nimre Mo. And so, so when your memory, Naja Humumanyame. Amen.